Today I have brought something for you that I want to show you and what really fascinates me about, among Native Americans and uh, here the Hopi tribe and uh, I want to show something to you and talk a bit about what per me personally is fascinating. What I have here is a kachina, a board kachina. Um, normally these are referred as dolls, but as dolls they are not for playing. But these board kachinas are made from the men of the tribe and these men often are in societies and these kachinas are sacred people, sacred um, ghosts, deities, however you would call it. And they are living on the mountains. And one time a year, these kachinas come down to the villages and have some dances there and some ceremonies and so on. So, and what does this have to do with these little board kachinas? When these men come or the kachinas come to the town or to the village, then they will have some of these kachinas, these board kachinas with them, and they are giving them away to the kids. And these special, very simply made board kachinas are um, given to very small kids. For It's not for playing, and this is why a doll, it's, it's not really a doll. Um, these have a loop on the back. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, this is the, the loop always comes with it and this is how they hang them on the wall near the sailing and they are sometimes um, in these adobe houses where they are living the Hopis and um, it's something to teach it's these little dolls are made for teaching the kids about the religious beliefs of the Hopi tribe and it's not they, they, they don't write. So uh, the thing is, they made these little dolls and they vary extremely for smaller kids and for larger kids. As I said, these board kachinas are made for the little kids, two years, four years old, so that they, in a very early stage, start to learn about the kachinas and about what they are for and their names and so on. And Later on, they become more and more elaborate and with way more details. And, um, but they look very abstract. And it's a funny thing is that in the, in the early 20th century, a lot of artists in Europe also had col uh, collections of kachinas because they were so inspired by this abstraction of the, of the deities and, and how the, the people um, depicted their spiritual world somehow. So, and it's a very interesting that these designs are not just something imaginative. Uh, here you see some clouds, for example, and also here these these strips. They are coming from the the dresses these dancers, these kachinas are wearing. Now we have um, an art market for kachina dolls that were made by artists and are also sold. And they, they get finer and finer and uh, way less abstracted today. So here you have, to, it's, I think it's a wolf. And um, yeah, you also see that it's very very finer carved. It's made from cotton wood, and you see also a necklace, and you see the dresses here. And this could be very, very finer. It depend, depends on how good the artist is, and uh, also uh, what prices could be expected for the kachinas. So, in in the nineteenth uh, and early twentieth century, they were much more abstract and very not as fine as these are today and you see here you see this um, coat somehow yeah or cape and the thing is that these have their reality parts or their 
looking like these kachinas are looking in real life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here you see also these little strips you saw at the board kachinas. It's very interesting how abstract things could be to teach what Kachina the kids are seeing and what, what Kachina is coming from the, from the mountainside to the village to help the village. And there's a, this, these items... It's depictions of what, what these kachinas are wearing. Here I have such a, a kilt. And you see also the strips. This is a cotton. And it was used uh, among the Hopi people. So you see here, this is an embroidery. And you see exactly the designs that are depicted on the kachina dolls. And um, then you see here, just have to be very careful because they are very fragile, these cottonwood dolls. You see here, this this kind of kilt, and you see you see here the side board border, and then you see something like this here. These are two sashes that lay are laying uh, atop of each other. So, right, and here you see uh, this also a necklace with the yakla. A yakla was in former times they say that they were air hangers, but later on the people put them at their necklaces. And you even see this here. Um, here you see also a necklace with a yakla. It's very, very ge geometric. And But the information for the little kids is also there. These are artist dolls, um, as they are, are made today uh, for, for the art market. So here you have such a, a sash. They are coming in a variety of width and also just in white and also just these uh, colorful uh, red or blue strips and quite often with these little um, pom-poms here that are just uh, a wool wrapped around something and this is what you see at these kachina dolls and what i'm really what, what i personally find really interesting is something i also want to show you uh, oh, oh, oh. is mm, here I have something else for you it's also this is not a kachina this is a koshara a koshara came come also in the village with the kachinas and they are somehow clowns and what I personally think is really interesting that we here see here with a watermelon um we here in, in Europe would have a sacred ceremony in the church and so on. And it, everything has to be sacred. And the funny thing is, or the interesting thing is that in these Hopi, but also in other Native American tribes, um, you always have something like a kushara, like a clown, that is breaking this just sacred ceremony bringing something human inside, something to smile for the people and so on. And it's very interesting um, that other people do their ceremonies totally different in the, uh, in, in, when, they, when they break a, a spiritual, a very sacred ceremony with some fun makers, some people, some ghosts, some whatever, to break this highly spiritual event. And this is a very interesting thing. And I think it's interesting that different people, or you, you don't have just to see your world as your world is, with something sacred is something sacred, and something spiritual is something spiritual, some profane is something profane. But these people do this, do their ceremonies totally different um, and have a totally different concept of uh, ceremonial events and um, about life also. And this is absolutely cool. And uh, that's why we should learn something about other people and other ideas of indigenous people and native peoples from all around the world, because 
we also can widen our own view of things of how to teach our kids, for example, with um, dolls that are not dolls, nothing to, to play with, but to learn something about life and sacred ceremonies. It's interesting. See you soon.